when it's finished uploading late morning, early mm -hmm. afternoon. So there we are. So I think we are, we are rolling. So yeah, so this is kind of what um, I'm just working on with the second years on Monday. Uh, so it's a suggestion from um, from one of the students uh, to do an anglerfish and not just an anglerfish, a bionic fish. So um, so the um, first year students are doing the make a mech. Second year students are kind of basically choosing an item like it could be anything, an asset, uh, a character, an environment, and basically same thing, small project. Uh, sort of submit everything at the end of the week. So as I mentioned before, this is a continuation of that. What I'm going to be doing is sketching out the front and side view. I'm going to be then importing it into, if I just drag it over, into Maya here. Now you can get this for, uh, for free. Well, for free for a year. Maya Autodesk have now changed their terms of service. So you could originally get it for like three years, which is perfect. Mm -hmm. Now uh, it's just a year. So what, uh, what we started doing last year, and I think I'm going to start doing this uh, more this year, is uh, doing more stuff in Blender, simply because, yes, I know there are creative ways around, around this, but it's not ultimately, you know, um, I think, you know, it might be good to kind of at least to show a bit of a shift and have a, a bit more, um, yeah, a bit more choice. Um, I think to buy it, it's going to be probably out of your price range, certainly out of my price range. So you've got to renew the Autodesk, Autodesk license each year. Does that mean then that you can still get it uh, every year then? Is that right? So I might stand corrected there. So if that's the case, that might be, yeah. So you've got to renew Autodesk license uh, each year now. Mm -hmm. So GOPS, does that mean then that uh, you, can, you can basically just renew it year in, year out? Because if that's the case, that kind of solves all our problems. Still going to be doing some stuff in Blender, but... Um, New education license, yeah, okay, thanks, Gops. Thanks for that. So, you can renew it apparently, but it that said, I'm still going to be doing some stuff in Blender as well. Um, because it, it's a cool program. I did some uh, tutorials last last year looking at things like Grease Pencil, and for the first years, uh, I think you really enjoy that. It's a really cool tool. So, um, but anyway, so, but that said, let's uh, less of my yammering, let's just get on and uh, do some cool stuff. Eh? So I'm going to um, just enlarge that a little bit. So I've got several monitors mm -hmm. on the go here. So I'm going to look at, or maybe I'll bring it over to there. So it's a bit, there we go. So onto my other monitor just for reference. So I'm going to start uh, sketching this out again. I've got like a general idea of the, of the, um, of the thing itself. What's this, Sean? Yeah, only because they make you prove you're a student rather than being a, yeah. So yeah, because anyone, I think before, it's interesting, before the um, before they started doing this, you could literally just say, I'm a student and then get it. You didn't have to provide any evidence. And I think they got hip to that and went, ah. And that's why they're being restrictive. Personally, I think it should be a loss leader, a bit like with Blender. I think they should just simply, Make it free because it's good, uh, good adverse, uh, you know, good uh, advertisement for them, and also it's um, you know industry use it. It's a it's a main thing in industry, and and they'll make the money that way. So it's not like you know um, you know it's not like they're losing out on money. You know, yeah, sure, they're probably they're going to get uh, quite a bit from uh, you know from. Uh, from students, you know, from in educational institutions, but, um, but you know, it's like, come on, you know, like, it's like the thing with like with ZBrush as well, it's, it's, you know, just personally, I think, I think, look, just make it free, at least make it free for students, allow them to kind of get to, you know, to get to grips with it at home. And then of course, after the, the, you know, they've finished being a student, yeah, okay, you know, pay for it, whatever. But um, I just think it's a little bit mean um, to, um, you know, just to uh, have it, you know, because it's like, I think it's, uh, I think, I think it might still be something like 900 pounds, something like that. You can go, I think you can't, you might be able to get some kind of discount. But yeah, right, I think it's around about 900 quid, which is like, that's a lot of money. Even if you're working, that's a lot of money. So anyway, so what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, doing a warm up. I was talking to the students about this on uh, Monday. 
But before you kind of get going, of course, create another layer. So I'm going to call this, uh, I'll just call this sketch, right? You just double click on the layer. I'll call it sketch one. Um, just warm up. Don't just start drawing. I notice a lot of students do this where they'll just go straight into doing the drawing. Um, ideally, you don't really want to be working that way. You want to be working um, where you're just kind of warming up. And, uh, you know, you, you use the sketches also as kind of scaffolding. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, uh, for those who are unfamiliar, because uh, I'm aware that some people who've perhaps not used Photoshop that much, um, is essentially I'm just changing the brushes. You've got all these different types of brushes that you can get uh, in Photoshop. We can do a separate, uh, separate uh, tutorial on this, uh, going into Photoshop if you like. But... Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I know we're at various levels here in the, in the chat. But basically, in the brush here, you have got a multitude of brushes. You can also download brushes. Rob discovered um, some brushes from uh, was it Greg uh, Rutkowski that we were using I think last year. Um, go check his work out on ArtStation. But um, you can kind of get these beautiful, um, like almost like uh, charcoal or like oil painting effects. You know, like wet on wet. Wet on wet is where the kind of uh, artists use like a palette knife and kind of use the oil just directly on oops, directly on the um, on the canvas and you kind of get this kind of like can't really describe it's kind of like layered effect it's almost like a bit like layering a cake you know you kind of get this very kind of granular kind of um, um, yeah sort of like plastered type effect. On there, so uh, but yeah, so go check that out. So, but that's all I'm doing here at the moment, just warming up, just warming up. I always warm up anyway. It's like in my sketchbook, which I think I was showing some of you um, uh, earlier this week. You know, um, and I probably will do some. I've got a little. I'm not sure if you can see it here. Can you see it? Oh, there we go. So I've got another little kind of. So I've got the thing for the mic, and I've got this as well, which will hold a mobile phone, so I can do over the head kind of sketches now. So. I'm aiming to kind of do some like traditional stuff as well, just sketchbook, just anything really, just kind of like doodles, crazy ideas, things like that. Um, but yeah, so that's all I'm doing here. If you find that you, if you're following along with this either now or, you know, uh, watching the video, you, uh, if you're getting any kind of staggering going on, you can also change the image size. So if we look on here and say go image size, you can change it down. So at the moment, it's quite high. I've got it about 200, 300. You can change it down to about, say, 200. Um, it just depends what you're doing. You don't really want to start um, painting in, in big big strokes, drawing in big strokes, should I say. Just um, uh, try and keep it small. But if you are going to start using the smudge tool here, which I, I like to use this a lot, it'll start kind of, you'll start getting like lag. Um, if you're not careful. So um, I usually, I always default to doing things like spheres. Um, I like drawing spheres. There's another tool there. Might even use that same brush again on that, that brush 14. And uh, just create a highlight. Yeah, we could do, we're doing some sessions on, I touched on it with the second years, but also with the first years. Um, we could do, we're doing some sessions on, I think we will be doing it in the coming weeks, things like uh, perspective. And things like um, um, anatomy and, and all that good stuff. These are all like fundamentals you need for, um, you know, for um, you know, industry for you know, being concept artists or just doing assets and things like that. Okay, so I think we're. Um, I'm sort of yeah, I'm sort of all right. I think with that now, I think I'm sort of ready to start sketching out my bionic anglerfish. So I'm not going to put like a massive amount of details. I just want to kind of get. Because, of course, we're like, we've got, I've lost a little bit of time, but we're going to sort of carry this up until we're on about 11. So mainly it was just to kind of show you like a design process that you can go down yourself, where you can sort of design something, sketch something out, you know, within, like, say, half an hour, put it into Maya and, um, and uh, block it out, then put it back into Photoshop and then work on it. So, again, I'm going to be doing like a drive-by, really, with a lot of this, just kind of going through it. and. Um, um, just giving you the basics. Right, okay, so I'll tell you what I'll do here. I'm just going to go get the select tools, go through there. And I'll just cut that out. And 
I'll just go and hide that layer. I'm going to go and create another layer. And I'll call this Angler, Angler Sketch. It's always good to name your, name your, um, name your layers just so you don't get uh, mixed up. I can be terrible for this. I think once you get into like doing, doing the work, it can be, um, you just kind of get carried away and then you get mixed up. So it's always good just to uh, just try and um, keep tabs on what you're doing. Right, so I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with a uh, side view. So again, what you want to be looking at in terms of like an anglerfish, um, if I were to bring this tab back in a sec here, so this is a bit pixelated, but with the um, anglerfish, particularly if you look at something like this here, what, what we're looking at is, in terms of geometric shapes, we're looking at, let me just join that back up again there. There we go. We're looking at sort of like circles, triangles, uh, rectangles, things like that. So I'm going to take this side view. And what I'll do is I'll use the um, marquee tool there and I'll just cut that out on there. I'll go back to my other there and paste that in. It's not great quality, it doesn't really matter. So I'll just put that in like so, just so we can see a, an enlarged version. I might just flip that around as well. So just flip that around like that way. And again, I am going to sort of work rather quickly through this. So if you are watching this later or, or following it, you can just watch if you like, it's fine. Uh, and then like pause it, you know, if you're watching this later. And so we've got circles, we've got a triangle, we've got squares, things like that. So going back to our little sketch here. So we've got that circle. And again, I'm gonna sort of put like a sort of triangle in there like so. And then we've sort of got, if you just have a look on here, we've got like another triangle for the tail. So it's a kind of reverse of that, it kind of comes out like that. Now, I know this might look a little bit kind of clumsy. It's not looking very kind of fish-like, but you really want to be just concentrating on getting the basics in. You don't really want to be putting any details in. It's a common um, uh, pitfall of, you know, uh, with students when they first start sort of sketching stuff out, is to start drawing you know and it's like you've got to like lay the ground work for this and that's with sketching so if anyone wants to ask any questions by the way in the chat i've got my other little computer on the go so i'm open to any questions as well as i'm going along but i'm um i'm just trying to kind of get this get this done as quickly as possible okay so So the, the rather ugly fish, if you've seen anglerfish before, if you don't know what anglerfish are, they live at the very, very bottom of oceans. I mean, this is like hundreds and hundreds of meters down, maybe even miles down, actually, it's miles down. And um, they never come to the surface. Um, when people have tried to kind of bring them back up from the surface, unfortunately, the whole things explode because of decompression and all that. So um, then they're not built for the uh, for the outside world they live deep down deep where there's no sunlight hence why they've kind of got this if you see this little proboscis thing here that's full of a, like a, a sort of luminous uh, fluid which they use to basically attract prey. Right? so a lot of you probably know this anyway but they basically have this thing dangling and the fish on the bottom um uh, what was this? Let's have a look, I've got a message from someone. Who's that there? Who's this? This might be someone from the second year. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Oh, I think it's like a technical thing. All right, okay, it's just a technical, technical thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so they attract the fish. And then basically when the fish gets near to the little light bulb thing at the front of its head, that's when it eats it up. And you can see those like pretty horrible jaws. They're not actually that size. You can see a person there. I mean, they're not, they're not as big as that, so don't worry. All right, so I'm just going to just 
just try and concentrate on this a little bit and just kind of get the general shape. But like I say, if you want to ask any questions, you're more than welcome to. I think sometimes you reach a certain point where it's hard to talk when you get into the zone. Yeah. Especially with the kind of stuff that we do, because it's very creative. And uh, especially if you need to solve a problem within your concept, you need to just pause for a second and think, right, okay, do it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. You, you have to kind of, it's very difficult kind of, very difficult sort of talking talking and drawing it's a bit like patting your head and rubbing your stomach sometimes so sometimes it's okay i think once you kind of like get things established uh that's a different story i think you can, you can um then you can kind of free yourself up but i think when you're trying to figure something out even something like this i mean it's just a fish but it's like it's uh you still need to be able to kind of concentrate so well, that said, you know, I'm, uh, it's okay for if people want to ask. I think everyone's pretty much all right. They're probably just watching it or probably even getting on with doing their own stuff, which is perfectly fine. But, you know. I know Feng Zhu says that, uh, you know, his students listen to music. I think he yeah. just tells them off because ideally you shouldn't really listen to music until you've got everything figured out. Yeah, it's true. It, it is a bit of a distraction. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick on like some like ambient music sometimes. So just, you know, if you, yeah, stick, you, you, know you don't want to like stick on like, you know, you know, some, um, you know, particularly songs, you know, with lyrics. Mm -hmm. And also chatting to other students. I mean, I know like in class or even online, it, it can be a bit like that where, you know, uh, students sort of chat, chat to each other and you're not getting into the zone so you'd be kind of i remember that i mean <laughs> believe it or not i was a student once upon a time and i remember that i used to like chatting and talking whatever and i remember my tutors kind of saying like you know you know concentrate you know concentrate on your work because i'd be like talking about films comics things like that or games or whatever i used to be like an arcade kid back then so um but yeah the um but you're not you're not really just getting absorbed in in the process and i know it sounds very mystical but it, it's just you've got to allow yourself some quiet time just to yeah just get into it really So for anyone who's watching my screen, I'm just, and again, this is a bit of a happy accident. I wasn't going to add any water, but it created this cool little reflection. So I am just using that to my advantage. And I'm just going to paint in some very small specks. Happy little accident, yeah. It's like, uh, what's the name, isn't it? It's like uh, Bob Ross. Yeah. Happy little clouds. Happy little clouds. But you do though, when you add these images, you'll get details that you didn't originally think about. So <laughs> Good old Bob Ross. Rob Ross. <laughs> That's right. We don't make mistakes here. Love Bob Ross.
was in the army, wasn't it? That's right. It was a well. The story was, um, I'm, I think I watched most of his episodes. So mm-hmm. he used to scream a lot, apparently. So, yeah, yeah. And he made the decision he was never going to scream again. He was never going to do that. And uh, so he didn't. That's why, because he's, he's like very, very softly spoken, isn't he? It's like. It is a junkyard, so let's try and earn some junk. No, I don't want to. <laughs> but I can spend it. Drill sergeant, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. He didn't want to shout at people anymore. It's not good for you anyway. No, no. I got just because it's a job, it doesn't mean that you want to actually do that. Yeah. Remember, I was doing something just over the summer, and I anyway, long story, but I lost my temper. And I never I very rarely shout, but I, but I shouted so much. And it was only over a short period. Mm-hmm. I almost lost my voice. I almost lost my voice. I was like, oh, I think I had to do an open day. So it was like talking to people, kind of, going, yeah, I've just lost my voice. And stuff. I was shouting the other day. It was like really silly. Really silly thing to do, but yeah, anyway, yeah, just not good for you, not good for your vocal cords, and also not good for your mental states either. So, you never actually sold any of his paintings either, apparently. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think they sell now if you go on go online, I think they, people do sort of buy them up, but. He made, I think he like made his money with the, with the, uh, with the programs, I think. Yeah, and his, his paints and stuff. Yeah, I say, yeah. When I had my gallery, um, okay. no, actually, no, it's before that, uh, before I had my gallery, the, the guy who used to own the shop used to sell all the Bob Ross paints and all that. That's before I kind of got into it, but it was, <laughs> so it was this guy with the, like, the, the, uh, the orange afro. But it's amazing because he did one of the things also when you know you notice like when he's uh, when he does his um, thing it's very very often it's just pretty much rinse repeat yeah it is for sure he just does the that same thing over and over again that makes it easier for people to pick up his books and his tutorials and to follow along that's it It's actually quite a few concept artists that are taking his paintings and they're doing studies of them. But yeah, story. yeah, and that'd be something, wouldn't it? Like three, uh, do a three D um, environment. I think someone might have done it. You know, ah, I think someone's done that already, like a three D environment uh, of one of his like Rocky Mountain mm-hmm. kind of paintings. Mm-hmm. What was that? Oh, it was a museum that tried to collect them. I didn't realise there was something on Netflix, a documentary. Because ah. I know there was... Um, he had... Now, there, what was there was some controversy as well. What was it? There was... Um, he'd, there's a guy he went to study with... Because there's like lots of misinformation as well. Uh, but there was something where he learned everything he, 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 he did with some artist. Like he never gave this artist like credit, and you know he basically didn't know how. Well, I think he admitted himself he didn't know how to how to paint at all. That's it. His business partners. That was it. It's all the thing is it's interesting, right? Because um, it's like the same thing with Feng Zhu. I was talking to someone uh, some years ago, and I was talking about Feng Zhu, and they're saying, "Yeah, he like ripped off his like business partners." And it's like really how? I mean. I, didn't, I don't see any evidence of that. He's incredibly talented. And, it, and it's like any, you know, you kind of get these trolls that like will kind of fire from the sidelines. And then it's like, okay, so what are they doing? And of course, they're not, they're not doing anything themselves. It's, um, you find it's, it's interesting because particularly like in the creative world, you get this where there are kind of partnerships that kind of turn sour 
And um, I've I've experienced that. I've made films where yeah, it, 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 things can get a bit sour, particularly when you have success. And yeah, it can be you can sort of see the uglier side of things and fallouts and all that kind of stuff. So it does happen, but certainly like with like um, Feng Zhu, and I think it was something like it was like it was it was like I can't remember what it was now, but it was something. Um, Something to do with his classes or something, something, and someone had a, a gripe. Played by the students, as if, if you watch the, the YouTube channel. Right. Um, people, it's about 50 grand, basically, upfront, not not loan. It's about yeah. 50 grand, so it's like forcing them down and whatnot. And they're a little bit more, you know, for food and everything else. Yeah. You've got to come with the equipment. You have to come with a Mac and with yeah. the tablet. With the software, they they don't they don't fund that. So it's an intensive year course, but everyone assumes that they're going there to be taught by Feng Zhu. Uh, but Feng Zhu only does uh, one lesson a week or something like that. Yeah, it's very similar to what um, he does on YouTube. Yeah, but their instructors, um, yeah, go in more detail with perspective and drawing and stuff like that. So the other instructors are amazing. It's not like they go into the course and they're not really getting anything. But um, yeah, I think just people assume that they go there to be taught by Feng Zhu, but yeah. he's just too busy. I mean, it's it's his company, right? It's his business. So yeah, yeah. He's busy doing that and making films and doing his own work. So, you know, it makes sense. Yeah. I think I'd say maybe it's like, I mean, they could say, I guess it's like, you know, we were promised this, you know, and then we got with the tutors, you know, and it's it, it, it's one of those things where maybe like he didn't make things clear enough to them that he wouldn't be teaching them, but, you know, because he's like, I guess he's like the star of the show, isn't he? Yeah? So it's, <clears throat> he's what, he's the person that attracts them to the course. They expect to be getting more. So it's kind of like, I kind of get it, but at the same time, it's like, you know, it's, it's, good exposure i guess it's a, quite a prestigious you know uh, prestigious uh, course to go on and you know you well, could say i, I would if I had 50 grand in my pocket i would hope to and i spent 50 grand i would yeah i would hope so yeah but also i, I guess it's that 50 grand you you did you would thought, yeah, I kind of get it because it's like you're paying that. That's a lot of cheddar, and to be spending that, and it's like, so I'm not gonna. So the guy who like you know, the guy kind of got me into like wanting to kind of do this, he's not gonna be teaching us, and it's like, no. Well, I, I think the other controversy, controversy is yeah. that uh, a lot of the artwork that they show online. Um, I mean, it makes sense, but it, it's the best of the best, right? In the right. course, yeah. And, uh, a lot of their students were already in the industry or did something very similar, so oh. they already had say, ten years' experience in the industry, oh, right. and they joined the course to get one connections, and then you know just also brush up on their art skills. So a lot of the stuff that you see online is actually by professionals. Yeah. Um, not all of it. it there, there are students who have gone with very basic portfolio and come out with really good stuff but you know they only have about three or four hours of sleep because of the sheer amount of homework and tasks that they have so yeah because it is an intensive course it's like look you don't do you have to have three hours of sleep every night could you have eight it's like yeah sure but will you be behind yeah 100 percent. all right oh, goodness there's, there's very much a culture it's like well do you want to be the best? Then I'm sorry, you're just not going to be able to sleep. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's just so much work to do. Yeah. I remember I, spending, I did a bit of work. Sorry. You know, if you're spending that money, um, especially if you're young and let's say your parents are giving you the money, they're going to want to just do everything they can to get the projects done. Yeah. They do keep, keep strange hours, though, in uh, in Singapore, because I did a bit of work over there, and I was hanging out with some... I was teaching some students. This is years ago. And, uh, yeah, just, like, staying up until, like, middle of the night, playing games until... I mean, it's not, like, 
you know, teenagers here, but, um, but it, because it's like the climate, because it's just warm all the time and it's, it's kind of a bit like with similar with Thailand, it never kind of sleeps. They, these are kind of countries that never really seem to sleep. They're always kind of on the go. And it, from late at night, early in the morning, so it's kind of, I know they used to say, you know, New York was a city that never, never slept, but it's like, you go to Thailand and it's just always on the go. Shops were always open. You know. and so it probably, I don't know, it probably suits the you know, temperament. Mm -hmm. All right. What's this? <laughs> Bob Ross. Happy accidents and greed is what the doc uh, what the doc's called. All oh, right. It's good and goes into all that sort of stuff. Well, that's good. I'll check it out. <laughs> Happy accidents and greed. <laughs> a good time for that. Okay, so I think this is kind of taking shape now. The eye just does, this is the thing, the eye is still, not, it's still looking a bit too cute. The thing about, the thing about the anglerfish is it's got this kind of dead eyes, just like white. Horrible, like ghoulish eye. Yeah, it's probably something a bit more like that, isn't it? I probably just needed to do that. I can imagine that thing just coming towards you, like out of the blackness, not nice. So I'm not seeing what you're doing, Rob. What uh, what are you up to? I'm flailing. <laughs> flailing around. I think I need um, some different reference images to this. Uh, or what time are we at? Oh, which is a message from Holly, Rob. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So just to uh, just send a message. Shall I tell them that uh, you'll you'll pop over? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah.
Do, 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 do. All right. Now, I don't want to put too much detail in, in on this. I think I've got the general, got the general idea. Uh, we've got the proboscis thing and the um, and the teeth. So I might just. So all I'm really going to need for this is I I want something like that, like the jaws and like a trap. And yeah, all I'm going to really need is front and side view, and then I, I've, I've got really enough information then to uh, to take this forward. So yeah, something like that, like hinged. And again, don't worry too much about detail because the, the, this mainly, like me doing this here, is just mainly going to go straight in my own mind. What, um, you know, what intend to do. Beyond that, uh, there's other details that you can put in after you've kind of modeled it. So the whole purpose of this really is getting you kind of like to get the sort of design sort of straight in your own mind. And then once you've kind of got that, you've got it all kind of set up, that's when you can kind of come in with the, uh, you know, with the uh, 3D. And then just start, you know, start having some fun. Maybe come up with some other ideas. And then when you put it back into um, Photoshop, We'll see how far we get with this. I mean, I could do a little bit more, but um, I could still continue with it, you know, after, you know, after the session and just kind of show you like the finished, not the finished, but, you know, the, a bit more, you know, stuff with a bit more detail with the 3D and things like that. So, okay, so we've got that kind of view there. I think I'm just looking at the time. Do, 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 do. I'll tell you what I'll do. I mean, I'm just thinking like, because we've lost a little bit of time. All right. I've, I might just do like an approximation of a front view. But other than that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leap straight into uh, Maya. Uh, but just to kind of show you the, like the next process. So you've got something like that. I can. Um, just do a copy of that. And then we'll just bring that down to that. So I'm just bringing this down to the side here, just so I can get the dimensions for the front. All right, so, so just for example, I've got that on another layer. I might just create another layer. I'll call this front. Okay. And on that, so I'm looking here at getting like, okay, so that's going to be the top. That's going to be the bottom essentially there. And you can map out like say where the mouth's going to be. So, okay, so the mouth there. Oh, it's really annoying when it does that. There and there, so there are the lips. Okay, like so. Let me just take out these other lines just so there's no confusion all right and then so we know with the teeth i'm not going to worry too much about the teeth it's just mainly like the face so we've got the lips there like so so these lines are just really just oh, guidelines it's because i'm using the shift key and then we've got the eyes which are there and then we've got this kind of ear bit there 
Okay, something like that. Okay, so I've kind of got enough to go on from there. I might just create, just so we don't get confused, I'm going to create another, create another uh, layer. Let's call this front again. Right, so with that in mind, this is going to be just a bit sketchier, folks. So I'm just looking at, so the width is really the thing that you need to sort of determine. So going by that sort of sketch and what I've done there, I'm going to be looking at something like, again, it's entirely up to you, it's your call, uh, but something that's kind of fairly thin, like this kind of slab. So something like that. So again, geometric shapes, this is where it kind of like comes in handy. And then you can start determining where the mouth's gonna be. So the mouth, we know that like, that's where the top of the mouth is. Then we've got this jaw area. In fact, I might just do that hinge there. So we know that that hinge is gonna be there, like so. Same on the other side. So I'm just using the shift key, by the way, so in case you're wondering or following this um, later on. So to get the straight lines, shift key, and then just draw, you can sort of do straight lines like that. Yeah. But you get that, which can be annoying. Well, you certainly get that on my computer anyway. And then, so from there, looking at where that is, that's where the hinge is going to be. This was, might be a bit trickier for you to do, but, you know, um, Let's just let's just have a go at doing it. So this is going to be like a sort of an ellipse. I'll just turn off sticky keys in the settings. Thanks, Lewis. That's awful. I've been like suffering this. You know what? I think I've been suffering this for years. So there we go. You see, the teacher becomes the student. There we go. So I'll just. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it, it is always annoying, particularly when you're doing demos. It's like, oh. Right. And then we've got this bottom. So that's kind of where we've seen the bottom lip of our anglerfish there. And that just kind of curves around like so. And again, you can you can start to kind of put a bit more detail in there. I'm not going to worry too much about putting the teeth in. Uh, we've got the eyes. So again, just following these line, uh, lines, we're gonna have these pretty much at the side like that, then one at the other side. So they're gonna be sitting pretty much on the side of the, the side of the head. And then we've got this kind of top part, which kind of, I'll tell you, so, yeah, sorry, before I do that, I want to look at these side panels. So we've kind of got these ear parts here. You can see, so we'll have that going maybe something like, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, kind of tapered as well, like mitered. And we've got this part here. So this is intended to be more like, if that's that part here, then we can have that part. If I just draw out from there, we can see that that's where basically it's going to go something roughly like that anyway. Yeah, roughly like that. So we know it tapers down. So it's a good way of just kind of determining from there to there and then from there to there. Uh, I'll just mirror this on the other side. Again, these are just guides as well. So I don't think that you need to um, you don't need to stick with this. You know, your, you know, this is your creation. So you do as you see fit. And if you want to change things around, you change things around. You know, you don't, you don't have to um, obey anyone else's kind of uh, edicts. You know, you can just, you know, um, change things around. I'm not sure if I'm entirely happy with that. I'm just not happy with the shape. I think initially I was thinking that could be quite cool. So I'm just going to undo that. Yeah, so just don't be afraid to, um, 
to change things around. So I think I might just even just keep it straight, you know, just keep it straight. We've got that as the top. You can always change it around anyway. You don't do that. And then we'll have that as far as I can tell. I know this is like a massive lines at the moment, but so something like that. It's just let's just sort of keep it to simple. Yes, I will at some point, Lewis. I'm going to deal with those sticky keys and um, get that sorted. That's much appreciated. That that's uh, <laughs> just not. It's one of those things you just kind of. It's funny, isn't it? What you put up with. Right. So obviously, the idea with this is it's a cyborg, you know, biomechanical. Um, anglerfish. Yeah, was there any game? What's that? Let's have a look. I'm, I'm gonna do it. Sorry, my, my, the screen's going on my computer, unfortunately. On my other computer. I'm going to have to look on the old phone. Any game that requires you to hold shift. Has made me get rid of them long ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, definitely, definitely annoying. Right. So we've got those lips sorted. We've got the bottom of our fish now. So obviously, we've got the sides. And then, uh, right. And then we've got this jaw area. And then it kind of comes down to there. And of course, we've got. All the rest of it so i'm kind of giving him this kind of i'll just shade that in just so we can kind of get a better picture all right so something like that i'm going to take that away now i'll take that away now and then we're just left with that i might just get rid of our anglerfish completely Just chop that out because it's part of the same layer. Um, let's delete it. I don't need it. Okay, Control D. So we've got the that view there. I'm now going to just move this one up, or move it to, should I say, around about say there. So we've got a front and we've got a side view. Now I'm just going to bind them. Move them down. I might just reduce the size a little bit to say something like that and then let's go back up to this one here so again you can sort of tidy this up so i just again i'd like to sort of spend a little bit more time on this we don't have a lot of time uh could you get a hammer blender later i could certainly um do what i can um, I've done some tutorials in Blender, um, but I'll be honest, it's still I'm still finding my way through it. So, but uh, any help I can give you, of course, I'll um, I'll do. It. I'm mainly a Maya guy, um, but um, I've used things like grease pencil, done some models, done some lighting in there. I've got some videos on it. Played around with the lighting and um, and all of that. Um, yeah. Right. So again, I'll just use these smudge kits. Yeah, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But I just wanted to general, general. Little theme going on here. Oops, that one's quite thick. So we've got the eyes there, da, 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 and then we've got our and just change that brush around now. Whoa, okay, that's interesting. Okay, what's going on there? We're just sticking, I think. 
Right. And let's just again. I'm just doing this just simply, just so I can get my bearings on where everything is, so it's not just a, a massive sketches. Whoa! Welcome, whoever's just joined. We're getting some background going on there. Do, 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 do. Okay. So something like that. Anyway, all right. So where are we at? So last 20 minutes. Let's see how well we can do with this. So what I'm going to do, so whilst all that's going on, I'm just going to just continue with this now. And what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm just going to save this out as a JPEG. So of course you can do a lot more to this and um, we'll call this um, Bionic Angler Anglerfish, right? And we'll go JPEG, I'll put it on the desktop, save that out. Now, so we've got that there. Of course, you can do more to this, um, but obviously we just have to kind of cut through time. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring through um, Maya. And we're going to look at uh, doing uh, basically creating a model of this. So first, thing I'm going to do is yeah, I'm aware that stuff's going on um, off with the uh, thing uh, with the advantage of the moment. I'm just going to carry on for the time being, and then we'll see where we go from there. So, so with this, what we're going to do is I'm going to change the view of this. To start off with, I'll just go my uh, modeling standard just so we get a bit more space on the screen. The other one is just for doing animation. We will do some tutorials on this, but uh, what I'm gonna do here, so you can see here, there's a little symbol that says image plane. In order to kind of get the image in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit space bar. I want to get a front view of this. So I'm then gonna to go to the image plane. I'm going to import our JPEG. So I'm gonna to go to desktop. And go and find our bionic anglerfish. I'm going to go and import it. And voila, there it is. So if I hit spacebar again, go to the perspective view, you can see there now, uh, there it is in all its glory. So this might take a little bit, depending on the view, it can get a bit complicated because when you're doing this, this is for anyone watching this video later, the view of the camera can sometimes be deceptive. Uh, so for example, if I Let's just say I just move this, move this back for the time being. I'm going to go import again. So this time round, I'm going to do this side view, and I'm going to go to the image plane again, desktop, and go and find the bionic anglerfish. Go open, and then hit spacebar again. We've now got two separate views, like so. Now, what I want to be able to do is this is where it can get a little bit tricky. Is I want the front and the side view like so, but sometimes when you're modeling, it can end up flipped on the other side, depending on like, because you've got a camera, each view, whether it's orthographic or perspective, has a, um, has a camera on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in a sphere, like so, and what I want to be able to do, I'll just bring that and say, so, so this, is, this is the perspective view at the moment. If I come through to say the front view, that's showing up as okay. I'm just gonna take this grid away because it's a little bit confusing. So it looks like that's in the right view. So if I just say, just expand this out a little bit like so, and bring it down a little bit, that is presumably in the right space. But what I'm gonna do now is gonna have a look at the, um, in fact, what I want to do here actually is just move that to the front view. That's it. Sorry, my apologies. That wants to be the front view. And then we've got the side view. Now the side view is going to be the telling, telling one. Because if we look at the front view and then look at the side view, oh, that looks okay. It's just that sometimes the cameras can be um, a bit skew with. You end up sort of seeing the back from the front and the front from the back. But on this occasion, it looks like um, it looks like we're okay from what I can see. 
Okay, so welcome, welcome one and all for those who are here. Um, so this is going to be a continuation of yesterday's tutorial, where basically, so just to recap, uh, created a, a bionic or robotic anglerfish. So that was, it was the, at least the kind of initial, it's missing his little kind of proboscis thing there, but we can put that on. Um, and uh, we're basically going to block it out in Maya and then uh, put it into 3D coat, sculpt into it, decimate it, and then paint it. And if you're not familiar with 3D coat, don't worry, I'll, I'm gonna just go through all that. I'm not intended for the uh, session to be too long, maybe an hour, maybe two hours tops. We'll just see how we get on. But it's mainly for, sorry, I've got Lord of the Rings on the right there. Let's turn that down. It's intended mainly just to just show you in terms of like visualizing uh, concepts, uh, particularly going from sort of 2D into 3D, and then maybe even back into uh, back into 2D again. So, so following on from yesterday, we got as far as putting the uh, the image into Maya using the image plane. So just to recap, you kind of do that by going to front and side views and go into this little icon here, which is the uh, image plane. You click on that and you, this is where you can upload your JPEG to it. And then you get an image like this. I'll just take away that grid, <clears throat> just so you can see it there. This is what's called an orthographic view. Uh, so basically when you press a space bar in Maya, you've got these diff two different, well, sorry, four different views. You've got uh, top view, you've got a perspective view, a front view and side view. If you hold your mouse over anywhere in here, the space bar, it'll take you to that view. You can't rotate around because it's not, it's not perspective. Yeah, but whereas if I press space bar and go to perspective, of course they're holding down alt and the left button mouse, you can rotate around. So again, we can do further, um, you know, for those who are not familiar with Maya, we will be doing, um, you know, some more workshops in that, going through some of the basics. And uh, we do go into that, both myself and Rob, in uh, some of the videos on our channels. But anyway, without further ado, let's get going. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start trying to kind of give this some shape. So probably go with the front view. So I'm just going to go in space bar, look at the front view. And I'm going to move this sort of sphere along. So I'm not going to go too wild with this in terms of details. All, all I really want to do is just get some basic shapes with this. So geometric shapes. So I'm gonna hover over here and just click on this X-ray so I can actually see through it and get it into that area there. Now what I'm tempted to do, now shall I do this? Do this. Um, I'm tempted just to sort of do half of it and model it and then flip it over, but mm, we could do that. Um, we'll, we can maybe give it a go. So what I'm gonna do, tell you what, let's, 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 let's take a risk. I'm going to so I'm going to hover over there. Click on that now. Is that going to work? So I'm going to go into the other view there. Let's have a look at the perspective view. So yeah, so it's got. So that's what it's done here. I, uh, I figured it might do something like that. I might be tempted just to kind of maybe even model it. Let me just think. How I'm going to do it. Um, I could do it, I guess, and I could sort of flip it around and then move the side view. Um, or I could just keep it whole. Tell you what, sorry, that's my dog dreaming. If you can hear that wolf in the background, the dreaming in the background. So there we go. So we've got some added sound effects. Um, right. Let's uh, welcome to anyone else who's just joined us. Oh, Santino. Welcome, Santino. <laughs> so. Uh, let's have a look at, I'm not going to do a, I was going to do a mirror. I'm not going to do that. You know what? I'm just simply going to do uh, a little model where I'm just squashing and stretching it. Let's do that. Just keep it simple. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start moving some of these vertexes around. I think if I just get it as close to as possible and then sort of squeeze it in. So something, say something like that. I'm going to right click, go into the vertex mode <clears throat> and basically start just pushing and pulling some of these around. Now, 
I'm not going into great detail with this because I'm going to leave that to when we get into 3D code and I'll sort of start sculpting into it. But basically, I'm just going to get the approximate shape of our character here. So for those just joining us, this is a continuation of a tutorial or workshop that I was doing yesterday. Um, we had to kind of draw it to a bit of a sort of conclusion quite quickly because of some outside stuff that was going on. So I did record that, but I'm going to be splicing this video with that other uh, video from yesterday. And then you can see where we go from there. So we've got that there. And then I think what I'm going to do here is now, just bear with me a second, folks. I'm just trying to orientate myself with this because we've got this front view. I might just have a look at a different orthographic view. We've got front. What about back? Let's try that. That's not, is that going to work? If I, I'm just going to do a little bit of a, just a mess around a second, folks. Just bear with me. That's there. Okay, so we've got that there. That will be in the front. Because they have these, the way that the cameras are set up in Maya is deceptive. So what's, for, you know, what's at the front could actually be at the back and vice versa. So just bear me a second while, so just do a bit of tweaking. So that will be, uh, and then they'll have the, sorry, we'll have that view there, which will be that view. And let's have a look. This side view there, and turn it back onto visible again. <clears throat> um, let's have a look here. So we've got that view there, that view there. Okay. Okay, I think we'll just make the, we're gonna make the best of this we can. So I'm gonna just get the approximate shape there. And then if I go into the side view, like so, and put it into that, I'm going to see if I can now just start trying to give that some shape from that. I'm just going to go into perspective view. So all I'm doing at the moment is I'm just trying to kind of like get an idea of where the basic shape is with the side and the front view. All right, I think that's yeah, I think that's right. There we go. Right. <clears throat> so with this now, all I'm going to be doing is just sort of, you know, rather clumsily, just kind of selecting the vertexes. And so this is where I kind of got to yesterday. And we're just going to make the mouth area. Now I'm not going to worry too much about trying to put too much detail in here, as I said before because I just want to kind of get it where it's kind of got the mouth open. When I get it into 3D code, then I can start kind of playing around with, um, you know, some of the more, um, uh, you know, a bit more detail. So what I want to just try and get that basic kind of mouth shape there. And Move that through to there, maybe down and through. I'm just going to have a look and see what it looks like in the perspective view. Okay, and that's kind of shaping up okay. All right, so I'm just going to go back. Now, obviously, we don't have a great deal of time. As I said at the beginning, I'm going to try and aim for around, around about so an hour or so 
uh, might be a couple of hours, just depends. Um, but uh, we'll just see, we'll see how we get on, eh, folks? So in the meantime, just trying to kind of hash this out. I'll just move that back a little bit. All right, so we've got a basic kind of mouse shape there. Now, when you're doing stuff like this, you can also use the sculpting tool and it will allow you to kind of do certain things like you could smooth, so you could select that. Now you'll probably need to you hold down B and if I just maybe just zoom out a little bit, there we go. It's a little bit tricky to maneuver, but basically the left button mouse and the B key can allow the brush size. So I'll just scroll in with the middle mouse now and just move in a little bit there. And if you hold down the shift key, you can actually smooth some of these elements out just so it's not so jagged. And then you could flip back and forth. And if I now, now go to like the model and you can see there areas, because what you don't want to have happen, and I'm saying this not necessarily, necessarily for any of the... Uh, Second or third years are in the in the in the um, channel, but uh, for first years, it's you don't want these vertexes and you know your, your polygons getting crossed over because you can end up with all kinds of mess. So here, I can at least then start to get an idea of like what I can do in terms of, say, for example, in the middle here, I might be just like select and then shift select these areas here, and I think that's it. To there, hit the W key and then just sort of move that back like so. And then I'll just go to the side view again. So again, it can look like a bit of a mess here whilst you're kind of figuring it out, but it's that's why it's kind of good to hit the space bar and just go between all the different views. Anyway, so let's go back to the side view. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go quiet a little bit whilst I just sort of concentrate on just trying to get the approximate shape here but uh if anyone's got any questions by the way you know don't stand on ceremony you can uh, feel free to ask him so put something in the uh, put something in the chat you know it's entirely uh, it's entirely up to you it's absolutely fine
All right. So we've got some kind of shape going on there. <clears throat> so just go back into the object mode. Again, it's not looking, you know, it's not looking too pretty at the moment. So I'm not, I'm not that concerned. Should be able to kind of start, start to get it kind of like, um, it's really when we get it into 3D code where we can start kind of like smoothing stuff out and, and all of that. So I'm just gonna smooth some of these areas out here. Like so. And then as I was exploring yesterday, there's also the uh, things like the eyes. So again, it's gonna be really simple with this. I'm gonna use like some basic, you know, some basic uh, geometry. So I've got one of these cylinders here. I'm going to uh, rotate one of those. I'm gonna use that. the ears And I'm just going to mitre, <clears throat> mitre this cylinder as well, or like a mitered edge or a bevel. Something like that. Let's turn that up a second. So something like something like that's fine. <clears throat> then I'm going to use that control and um, D and just copy that. Put that on the other side, something like that. So let's just kind of have a look from the perspective view. We've got some spheres for the eyes as well. So this is really, you know, just doing this really on the fly, really, really quick. Oh, go away. Something like that. Let's move that down a little bit. That is shifting down to the side. Shift that, copy that I there. So Control and D. Then just move that other one over there like that. So this is really, really quick. But again, this isn't like if you're doing things like animations, or even if it was going to be, you know, for um, you know, like a, a character in the in the game that was going to be sort of like quite prominent in the game. You probably want to be taking a bit more time and you know stuff like that, or whatever. But, you know, just for the purpose of doing like a workshop. 
know, just so you can kind of get off the ground and actually get something, you know, on the go, then it's not a bad way of doing it. So I'm not going to worry too much about like the things like uh, the uh, the lips. We can sort of take care of that a little bit later, and the teeth as well. We could probably play around with that in 3D coats. Can put some stuff in there, but I'm going to leave that for the time being. And also, he's got his proboscis as well, which kind of comes off his head. Some other bits and bobs like the uh, this thing, the tail thing here. Now, I'm inclined just to kind of use cylinders again here. And again, I can just sight this by eye. You don't necessarily need to, um, you know, you can just you could do it again on the fly, or you could use the the image plane just to kind of play around with that. But uh, I'm just going to go into the um, side view there and. Again, just do things like rotate, get it into position. So I'm just going to get it like the approximate shape of that. So I might just use the vertexes there, widen it a little bit. So use the um, R key. because It's got a bit of a taper to it there. So we'll have that kind of going into the body. I might just taper these down. Something like that. And then maybe even, well, let's move. Shift that around a little bit. Um, and again, I don't want it to look too even either. So it's got a kind of clunky, you know, so no real sort of straight edges. As it were. But yeah, something like that maybe. I'll just go back into object mode. And again. Just tweaking it. Something like that. And then what I can do is once I've kind of done that, is I can control and D that to kind of copy it, but then I can just replicate, you know, shrink that down like so. I'm going to make sure that it's actually going in place. So I'm just going to go into the you can see here, because it's off, you see, it's not giving me an accurate representation. So I'm just going to shift in the control there and then move that into the body like so. So the image is really just a guide. It's just to kind of keep you on track as much as anything else. And let's go back to the side view. And what I'll do is I'm just going to look at look at oh no i'll play around that in a bit um got that there and again i think what i'll do is i'll bring that in and again i wanted to kind of just skew some of this so i'll take say some of those vertexes and some of those vertexes and Just maneuver those around a little bit. Okay, and then I can go Control <clears throat> D again and just shrink that down a little bit more. Maybe rotate it. And they can have a look in perspective view and it's starting to kind of take shape anyway, something like that. Okay, and then go back to that view. So, might just, yeah, I think I'll just, I'll just continue copying it. Just squeeze that down a little bit, rotate it. Control and D again. No, not that, that. And, oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's try that again.
Just kind of look at the perspective view. So yeah. Okay, and let's go back into the side view. And I think for that, I might just actually bring in another cylinder. I'm just gonna rotate that. So I think with that one, we could probably just sculpt into that. But I just wanted to kind of just fan that out a bit at the end. So just get that. Something like that. Then let's go back to the uh, perspective mode because obviously that's out. And then just move that in to say something like that. I might just shrink it down a little bit as well. You don't have to be massively precise with stuff like this. You know, again, these are just guides. So we've got something like that going on there. We've got the things on the side, got the eyes, got the basic shape of the mouth. And then we can start to kind of have a play. I mean, can I can maybe put the, I don't know. I mean, two minds whether to put that. I don't know, maybe I will. Maybe I will put the little proboscis thing on there now when I come to think of it. Now I could, do this a number of ways. I could use, um, like, say, some of these shapes to kind of create it. But I'll, um, uh, for those of you who don't know, there's another little function you can use for this. If I just turn the grid back on there, uh, there is another function. I'll maybe demonstrate this here. So you can you know, create curves and then actually project a circle through that curve to kind of create like tubes, which is quite handy. So do that by uh, going to uh, create and it's curve tools cv curve tool <coughs> and i'm going to turn this this little symbol here i'm going to click that on there and essentially what i'm going to do is this so uh, i haven't got the anglerfish uh, reference but essentially it's kind of like a dangling rod so i'm just going to do something like that you can see there and it's kind of sticking to the grid and then what I'm going to do here next is I'm going to go to create again and curve tools, uh, sorry, uh, create again and nerves prim primitives and circle. And so it will create this little circle. Now it's going to go to the select tool. So effectively what we're going to do is we're going to sort of like extrude this circle, use it as a kind of guide and then project it through that line and it should follow it by right. So if I just bring this in alignment with that curve, as far as I'm aware, you don't have to really line it up perfectly. But depending on the, the type of curve that you want, now obviously this is more of a, a kind of dangling rod. So I don't want it to be too thick. So I'll say something like that. And then what you can do is essentially with that selected, you shift and select your curve. And then if you go to surfaces and extrude, you just need to click on this little square symbol here. And in the directions, you just need to make sure that it's a tube. So basically make sure that all of these are selected. Tube, um, I'm not sure if any of those selected. I'm just gonna select them just in case. And polygon, yeah. And make sure it's in quads. You got control points. So there we go. So make sure it's just, you've got that going on there. You've got it on polygons and also that it's on, you've got control points, quads and control points. Now, drum roll, it should, uh, it should now project through. So it might be flipped, in which case I can just reverse it. Uh, the normal but we'll just have a look, shall we? So extrude, there we go. So it's done it. Now, it may be that when you do it, um, it's black. Uh, don't worry, it's just flip the normals. And all you need to do there is in, uh, just give me a second in. Uh, oh goodness! In it's all right. It's been a been a, a month or so since I've uh, been playing around with Maya. It's in reverse. There we go. And you can just reverse the normals. So that, that's all it is. Okay. So at the moment, though, the 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 line and the circle that I've created are still bound to this. So if I were to 
let's say, if I select the line, I'll go back to selection. Let's say I just select the uh, that tube and then just move it, move it to one side, or even indeed move it there. Right. Historically, these two things are still connected. So if I select that, let's say I go to like, um, you know what it be? Is it uh, like a control point? If I select that, you can see that it's still connected to it. Now that can be quite handy if you want to continue manipulating it, right? But maybe you don't. Maybe you're like you, you're happy with the curve. You don't want to play around with it any longer, and you just want to, you know, get to it. You're gonna to have to break the history. And how you do that is you go through to um, edit, delete by type, and then oops, delete by type, and then delete history. Now as a double measure, you could even just go edit and delete all by type and history. So therefore, there's not no connection anymore. So fingers crossed, if I now go and delete this, it won't do, go and delete the uh, the actual uh, tube that we've made. So hopefully you found that uh, found that quite useful. So what we need to do here though is next is just need to kind of take this down. So you can, very simple way of doing it. You can like maybe just go into edge, double click, uh, R key, and then just sort of narrow it down like that, something like that. So you can do this is really handy for things like uh, if you're making trees or doing ducting pipe pipes stuff like that. Uh, you can also use this method for like if you're creating an object and you can click around with that curve and then click on it. So if you want to kind of do creeping vines or you know anything you like really, you can, you can use that. So we got that there. So I think that's, that's probably all right uh, in terms of like in shape. Uh, now for making this kind of bulb, you could go a number of ways. You could try and like extrude out from this. That might be one way of doing it. So you could go again with edge selected. You could uh, click on that, maybe press, press? Press Control E to uh, to extrude, and then you can sort of play around with some of these things here, and uh, offset to do to do it like that. That's one way of doing it. Or you could just get a sphere and attach it. So you could. What I'm saying is, you could do you could do it this way by uh, clicking off this. So it'll click on again, go extrude, and then again you could sort of do it that way. Use the offset and just kind of create this or kind of bulb on the end, that kind of thing. And then to sort of finish it off, you could uh, uh, go to um, go to mesh and fill hole and it'll just basically cap that off. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is you could just, if I just undo that there, you could maybe even just seal that off. So you could go mesh, fill hole, then just get a sphere, get a sphere like so. Let's drag that over. And then you, you could just attach it, right? So let's say, for example, I just rotate that like so, so it's in line with that, just so it's in line. And then let's make it a little bit more like bulb shaped or egg shaped, something like that, like so. Um, and it's got to be able to sort of just intersect with it because we're, we're going to basically get it to become like part of the object. So. Again, if you want to kind of like line it up, you can do just sight it by eye, <clears throat> something like that. And then after you've done that, what you can do is just, uh, uh, well, you can do one or two things. For the purposes of going into 3D code, you can just go shift and click and then combine it there, like so. Or what you could do is you go uh, object and select and then select that and then go through to Boolean. Boolean will, oh, let me just seal it before I do that. Make sure if you do anything like this, make sure that all the edges are sealed up. Otherwise, it could go a little bit funny. Let's try that again. Edge, double click, and then fill the hole. Yeah, so basically, you could go object mode, select, select, Boolean. And what it'll do is it'll join them. Now, it won't be pretty, but if you just click on the x ray there, it, is actually, it, it has actually joined it as an object. It's got rid of the, the part that it, where it's intersected, which has basically got rid of it. It's not entirely um, necessary for what we're doing, but just you know, future reference. Obviously, you need to retopologize this. 
Now, that's something else we can get into. For anyone else who's not familiar with it, like things like quad draw, where you retopologize, you can see quad draw there. Quad draw is just, again, I'm going to do a quick, quick drive by on this. Essentially, what you can do is take an object and uh, let's just try that again. It's going to go into object mode. Let's just select that and then go quad draw. What you can effectively do is, is it going to allow me to do it on this? Uh, maybe not. So have a look, quad draw. So basically what you can do is you can kind of create vertexes on, um, on a model. Um, you know, something's not entirely right, but basically what you can do is you can get, oh, I know why it's right. It's okay. It's me. I'm going to make the surface live. I beg your pardon. So make live. It's all right. It's me. Uh, let's go to object mode again. And what you can do is you go right click and make live. So now it's this kind of like object here. And then with quad draw, what you can do is essentially retopologize. So you could sort of go, okay, I'll um, click. I don't know why it's doing that. That's interesting. Why is it doing that? Okay, so it should be that, let me, is it to do with that? All right, so it should basically by rise create a, um, Uh, create a um, point. Oh, there we go. I don't know why. It's strange. It could be a blip. It could be me. I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, what you do is basically create like vertex points and then hold down um, the shift key. You can actually create quads, which is pretty cool. Now, no worries. Kill shared you. You, uh, you go. And then you can click like that and do it like that. This could be quite handy for things like if you've done something quite complex and you want to create like a low poly version of it, it can be very, very handy for that. And it's, it's um, 3D Coat's got a, a very similar function. Um, but, you know, in terms of like, if you want to kind of like a cleaner geometry, this can be a very kind of handy way of doing it. It can be a little bit labor intensive. So, it, you know, it can be a little bit laborious, but, you know, you get the general idea. And also you can do... You hold down control you can also do subdivisions as well so and because it's hogging to the actual model it'll actually start to not sculpt but it'll basically you can see there where there's like a little bit of a disconnect on that joint there the more subdivisions you put in there the more it'll kind of hug that area and you know um create you know uh, create the sort of subdivision you know to give it the shape but anyway we're not going to do that we're going to do it all very kind of like just quick, dirty, just straight to the point. And what we're going to do now is we're going to just take it off that, select it, rotate it. Now we're in for time. Okay, we're off. We're right for time, aren't we? Uh, so rotate it that away. Now, if you want to kind of get this precise as well, again, for those who don't know, if you're trying to get something at a certain angle, like a, like, uh, like a, a right angle, you can see there in the channel box, you've got rotate, it's on the Z axis. And if you kind of try to get it straight and it won't go straight, all you need to do is click on it. So at the, it's at minus at the moment. So if I go minus 90, which is 90 degrees, see there, that'll be perfectly at 90 degrees now. So I'm gonna move that now into, into our character. Now that is a little bit too big, it's safe to say. So I probably need to just reduce the size of that a little bit. Move that in to say something like that. Um, might just enlarge it a little bit and might rotate it a little bit as well, because it's kind of, it's almost like it's about to eat it. So, something like that. Okay, that might do. So we've got the basics, right? So that's like, you know, where are we now? Half of me kind of uh, faffing around. But almost an hour to kind of get something blocked out. Yeah, and then you're kind of ready really at the stage to kind of start basically putting it all together, you know, combining it all and then export it as an OBJ, which is what we're going to do next. So I've got that there. Next one I'm going to do is you could just like literally like use the marquee tool, 
marquee tool, marquee tool, and just highlight the entire thing like so, and then just go uh, mesh and combine, just so it's like one OBJ. Because when we put it to 3D coat anyway, it's going to ignore all the rest of the geometry and it'll just import it. It'll kind of reconstitute it in its own, um, you know, in, the own, in its own program. So got that there. Now what I'm gonna do is go to file, um, export selection. Now it looks like I haven't got um, uh, OBJ selected there. This may be, if you're new to uh, Maya, you won't have it in there. So what you need to do is gonna kind of come out of that again. Gonna to go to windows and uh, settings and preferences and it's in plugin manager. And in that, if you, you can actually type it in OBJ, it should show, there we go. But you can scroll down anyway, and you wanna make sure that that's selected. You could even go auto load, but you can just make sure it's just loaded like that and then close. So next time when we go to file and export selection, OBJ will show there. Now you can export as, um, looks like we've not got FBX there as well, but you know you can put in FBX. FBX is generally what you've exported and you've got textures on there and stuff like that. So let's just call this Bionic, Bionic and uh, Anglerfish. I'm not putting any spaces in there simply because if you were to put this into say something like uh, Unreal Engine, it doesn't like spaces, you'd have to put dashes. Anyway, put this on desktop, export, there we go. Now, moving forward, so you'll find 3D code on, um, on apps anywhere. If anyone has any difficulties, by the way, you can um, contact ITS, because sometimes it can be a problem of like network, not being part of the network, and you have to use a thing called Cisco. I think you can see it, there we go, you can see that Cisco AnyConnect, um and this little thing here that's the cloud uh, cloud paging player so anyway moving forward i'm going to go through to file and i go through to uh sorry go through to yeah sculpt go to file i'm going to go to um import object i'm going to go and find our bionic anglerfish and there it is in all its glory now you'll see that at the moment, if you look on this little box here, um, it's giving you like a poly count. Now in order to kind of get some nice sculpting, I'd say safely without your computer crashing, something like a million, a million polys. You can do it a little bit lower, but we'll put it around about a million odd, you know, just roughly like that. Uh, now all you need to do really then is just hit enter. Give it a sec, uh, click yes, there we go. Now it will remain in this kind of translucent <clears throat> um, position until uh, you do anything else. But if you like start moving it around, uh, you'll start creating duplicates. So what you need to do is then just go and select a tool. So they'll say something like build. And once you've done that, you've now got your uh, model. Yeah. Now we've got all the, the, the polygons and all that. We're, we're gonna sort of smooth some of this out. There's a bunch of stuff on here. If you are three, uh, you know, new to sort of 3D coat, um, we'll do a proper session on this because there's a lot to unpack. Things like the tools and materials and things like that. It's on like a default material. Uh, don't worry too much about it. All I'm going to do really is, is just sort of showing you now today just how you can sort of create quick concepts and sort of play around and uh, and also play around with lighting and then sort of reimport it, say back into um, to. Um, uh, Photoshop. So what I'm doing here at the moment is, although it might not be perfectly centered, I want to maybe just use the mirror function on this or symmetry. So I'm going to click on symmetry. Now it should be on the X axis. Now it's going that way. Now it's offset. So let's see if I can get it roughly in the middle. So if it's not in the center, you just need to kind of redo it. You can see that it's not perfect, but I'm just going to keep it like that for the time being. You can use your middle mouse to kind of uh, use the select the brush size and holding down shift you can actually start to smooth some of this out so it starts to look a little bit more organic like so so i'm just going to take a minute just to kind of go around this and just start smoothing this out and it should be doing the same on the other side but again it's not it won't be ideal
Now, again, this is always good to kind of keep reference as well. So, um, you know, you could have it on another screen, uh, reference for, um, you know, uh, anglerfish. Uh, I'm just kind of working from um, memory at the moment. I've got my, if I just bring it up, where is it? I've got it there, is it that? That was the original, I've got the original one here which you can't see because it's gone to my other screen. Like so, so that was kind of like the original and then to kind of change that around a little bit. So I can maybe like use that as a bit of reference, but also on there, you can see it's got some like anglerfish, rather ugly looking creatures like there. So using that, so you can't see that on screen, but I'm just going to use that as a bit of reference and just start um, start playing around. So the hold down shift and again just sort of smooth some of this stuff out. And again, you can really just start reworking this. Uh, I'm just going to hit F just to kind of get it. That's better. So hitting F will basically just get it a bit more centered for you. Oh, and then there were and then there were three. <laughs> there we are. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just look at maybe just building on the on those lips. And let's have a look here. Card box, what's clay? We can try so you know, try some of these tools out. See what works. You can also use some of these other things as well, some of these um, tools if you want to get a bit more precision. So I'll just undo that. And do that so you can just get a bit more control over and then just hit like escape just to kind of come away from it so that can be quite good try and increase the strength of that a little bit just gives you a bit more control let's try that again Let's try that. Let's see, escape, and then let's just try that. All right. And then you can sort of start adding some other bits and bobs. So again, just kind of blocking it in really and looking at different ways, it kind of, of course you can use it in the negative as well. So you can sort of hold down, um, sorry, just come back after that again. Use that, say the, um, the build tool and just put it onto like a normal brush. Um, you can also use like control to kind of like do the negative. So you just take the strength back down a little bit. So if you want to kind of give it a bit more of a sculpted kind of like look and then build on it and that kind of thing. So you can just keep going back and forth. You can do that as well. Get those eyes looking a bit more evil. Looks a bit more menacing now. Mm -hmm. 
do, do. Got Latin. Oh dear, it's a bit harsh. That. Uh, make it plain so instead of flat and almost oh, chisel. Uh, a bit more appropriate. Let's try that. Yeah, it's a bit better, isn't it? I'm going to try and flatten off those lips a little bit. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot better. Okay. And Smooth out some of this. Stuff here. Maybe using this sculpt. Uh, sorry, chisel effect on there as well, just to give a bit more definition. Now we can maybe add some more. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can do. Oh, da, da, da. Let's have a look. Again, I'm just trying to kind of keep it just really, really basic. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's a bit harsh. I'm going to put probably the main emphasis on the on the face, um, and again, you could take as much time as you like on this. I think just for the purposes of this, you know, of the um, of the tutorial, I just wanted to kind of just just 
give you the bare bones. Where you run with this, of course, is entirely up to, up to you. And of course, you can take lots and lots of time on it. Um, but I just wanted to come just do this little demo just to show you, you know, at least just also just show you for those of you out there who are perhaps just new to Maya and also new to 3D coat, like what you can achieve, you know, really in a couple of hours. Um, oops, I want to do that. And oh, again, I don't want to do that. Just reduce the strength of that. I'm just trying to smooth out some of these. Uh, polygons without destroying some of the detail there. And also, don't think you, you need to put uh, loads and loads of sculpting detail, of course. You know, you can leave a lot of that to things like textures, so you don't really need to be doing that with what you're doing in terms of like you know with the sculpting there's a lot of that can be answered later on okay so just add a bit of definition there now there are other things oh there's the teeth of course and there's this little bauble thing uh, the front so just just try and smooth that out a little bit Like so. If you want to, you can kind of work at the base a little bit and build on that. Something like that. So let's have a look. Build up the character, the character's kind of forehead as well, just so it looks a bit more menacing. Not the kind of thing you'd like to see when you're at sea, particularly if you're at, uh, at some depth. All right. So, again, I'm just going to bring this. So like with this original one, you can see here with these anglerfish, you know, the kind of quite ugly little characters. The one thing I'm missing is missing the, uh, I could do some little kind of flappers, I guess, just to give an indication of, you know, it's got some like, uh, let's have a look and see what we can do. Something like, um, can have a go at should I play around with that? There's the pose tool. Maybe have a look at that. No, maybe not. Another day. Let's just keep it simple. Um, yeah, let's look at the move tool. Then we can do here is maybe just try and warp some of this as well. So Just play around some of that, maybe even with the face. Change a bit of the jaw there. How about that? Just so it's got a bit more of a bit more of a mush. You can play around with stuff like that. But anyway, you get the general idea. You know, get it like say, you know, if we go back to my original one, you can kind of start to kind of get it closer to that how it was but um other thing like teeth again we can uh, just have a quick quick dive into that add you're right um so a quick dip into that where we are just smooth this out so things like um if we go down to the bottom here Things like spikes can be pretty good. So we can have a look at like that. So we could take that, 
and uh, let's see if we can. I'll either just use the move tool or I'll, I'll have a look and see if I can use the spikes. We'll, we'll see. Um, do, 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 do. Ugh. Yikes. That is scary. That is scary. That's probably about just right, actually. I could do like those horrible thin ones, but um, let's have a go at that. There we go. No, that's working all right. Let's stick with that. Let's put some like thinner ones in there as well. Scary. Ugh. Okay. And maybe some larger ones there. Yeah, you definitely wouldn't want to meet this. Definitely, definitely wouldn't want to meet this. Yikes, that is scary. All right. And then we've got some the bottom row of the Nashes. Let's have a look at that. And make some, let's make some thinner ones as well. Something like that. And then. Uh, oh, that was a bit weird. Now let's go back again. You don't want it to be joining up. Yeah, something like that. Ooh, I guess that kind of works. They're all a bit all over the place. That'll be right. So, yeah. So I'm going to do a little bit more and then we we'll get into uh, decimating it and then doing a bit of painting. So just looking at, at doing, um, where are we? So do a little bit. So I'll look at the time. Yeah, we could still go for time. That's all right. I did say, be about an hour to two hours, something like that. And just have a look at going back to the build and just taking care of some other little bits and bobs here. So just smoothing some of this stuff out. And you can also build on some of this as well. So let's just increase that, that size there. Oops, wow. A bit of a jaw, so it's almost like a kind of like human head, like demonic head or some sort of on a fish's body. So something like that. You can have some other little little bells and whistles as well if you want. Um, things like little, um, if you want to kind of add, say. Little kind of nodules. Oops, something like that, you know, just little bits and bobs. Obviously, if you, you probably don't want it to be symmetrical. So, you know, you could just kind of play around with, oops, just putting them here and there, just intermittently around, just so it kind of looks a bit more horrible. Okay, yikes. All right, then, um, oh, that's right. I was gonna have a quick look at just, just around here. Wow, that's a bit too strong. So I'll just take that down again. All right, something like that. Um, I just have a quick look at this as well. Just hollow that out. Oops, blasted through to the side there. You've got to be slightly kind of wary when you're, when you're, you're using some of these sculpting tools that you don't go through, actually go through it, because you will just annihilate the geometry, so. All right, so that's kind of, it's looked menacing enough. Um, I think we're ready to kind of go to, of course, I mean, one of the things also I've not, I've not dipped into some other stuff like, uh, you can use, you can use like alpha brushes and things like that, but we'll perhaps like dip into that uh, another time. You've got things like stencils as well, you know, where you can kind of like, oh, you know, overlay, you know, overlay the, uh, the stencil, oh God, overlay the stencil, but I'm not, I'm not gonna get into that uh, at the moment. That, that'll be for another session, but, uh, but yeah, things like um, with the brushes, this could be quite simple. Like, so you could use, say, so you've got these things called alpha brushes. So you can make them yourself, 
Uh, but effectively, what you can do is choose one of these like black and white images along with your brush. And you can see there, if you just zoom in, it'll actually imprint on there. So just to show you as an example, I'll just zoom in there. You want to kind of give your character a little bit of texture. You can click on, you can see a little bit of change going on there. You can also use it in the negative. So I'll hold on control. It'll give you a negative view of that there. Uh, probably a bit more of an obvious one. Let's have a look. Something like something a bit more sort of scaly or um, let's have a look what we've got. Um, that's quite a cool one. So look at that. Turn up the uh, strength of that a little bit. Oh, that's a little bit too strong. Let's take that down. So if I just pop on with that, you can see puts like a like a nice little sort of texture on there. Again, you can take the power of that down a little bit. And then you can just sort of go on and sort of paint. And hey, presto, you've got some nice kind of detail going on there. You don't want to go too far on, on this because for the simple reason that there's a lot of the stuff you can take care of uh, with, uh, with textures. You know, so don't feel that you have to kind of sculpt absolutely everything. And there's also things like poly count to kind of take into consideration, you know, for, um, you know, when you're, when you're sculpting like this, you know, because it can be, you know, the more detail you put, the more taxing it's going to be on the computer. So it's just something to be mindful of. But yeah, so I'll put a bit of stuff in there like so. Gives it a bit of texture. Get the general idea. And like I say, you can make your own just simply in Photoshop, you know, just basically create sort of textures and then, you know, things like uh, snake scales, stuff like that can be quite handy. Okie dokie. So you should be really at the point where you're ready to, um, uh, to decimate it. I just wanted to show you before we do that, you don't have to necessarily stick with these materials. You can have a look at some of the shaders here and you can change it. Okay, I'll just get rid of that. You can sort of change it to a variety of different sort of uh, shaders. You can also make your own shaders. Oh, that was a bit frightening. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to save this. <laughs> so word to the wise, save your work. So I'll just call this fish. Yeah, particularly if you're putting a lot of work in, just save it. It doesn't harm just to save it. Um, we've got some other ones. Now, as this is like going to be a kind of like supposed to be some kind of cyborg, might be inclined to use something like um, like one of these shaders, like metallic, as you can see there. Yeah, or you could just keep it as is, but I'm, I don't know. Let me just have a think. I could keep it as is and then just sort of paint into it that way. Um, but it's entirely up to you. Now, how do we get on to painting it? So what we're going to do is where you've got this little um, um, sort of menu here, you can right click and there's a thing called also topo, which you can kind of get involved in. It can be a bit involved. So if you want to be quick, you can just go to retopo via decimation, click on that and just click OK. And then basically it'll calculate it. And what it's going to do is it's going to create an automatic reskinning of what you've sculpted, except it's going to be like, you know, a lower poly, right? So we've got something like that. That's looking okay. And then what we're going to do is going to go to bake, bake with normals, and then just click okay. Um, it'll give you a whole bunch of things here, like where you're taking it to. You don't necessarily need to worry about that for the time being. Just click okay. Give it a second. And if I just go back to sculpt now and then just turn this off, you see this little eye symbol there, turn it off and then go through to the paint shop. There we go. Should be able to see, I'll just hit F. Uh, our character, but this isn't the character. This is a low poly version. If I hit uh, W, you'll see there now, we've got that decimation. And you're basically ready to rock and roll. You're ready to paint. 
Um, there's a whole bunch of features on here. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too great detail with this. Suffice to say, you want to kind of just do some basic painting on there. There are some materials. Um, I'm just going to touch on this because mainly I just want to kind of show you just for the purposes of just doing like a, a render and then something you can put back into, um, into Photoshop. So if I look at, uh, say, here, where it says smart materials, uh, you've got a whole bunch of things that you can sort of choose from in terms of like you've got a default, but also you've got things like, uh, say, leather, for example, you got that. You can get also get a little preview. So if I just select one of those. Now by rights, I should have something where, is it doing something? Let's give it a second. So I'll go and say, select one of those. It'll bring up like a little preview box. So it'll actually show you what it's gonna look like. Now the cool thing about this is also you can upload uh, you can upload your, so click OK on that. You can upload your own images. So any kind of images you can sort of turn into a smart material, which is pretty cool. So there we go. So you see smart material uh, preview. So click on that little tab there. Now by right, okay, it's not showing anything at the moment. That's probably because it's dipping below. If I go and say, click on create another layer. So I'll go click on the plus sign, there we go. So it's, it wasn't showing before, but now you can sort of see, you just need to kind of create another layer. But it'll give you an overview. And with this, the cool thing about this is that even though you've got something like that, you can play around with uh, the size of things, move it around, increase the size of it. It'll give you a preview. So it doesn't stop there, you know, you could have a look at, so those are like, you know, that's leather, for example, if you want to kind of make leather. Uh, but also you've got other things like metals as well. So if you've got an idea of like a particular kind of metal, I mean, really any kind of, any kind of surface that you're, that you're wanting to do. So let's like say, for example, I've got something like this kind of rusty looking metal here. Let's have a look at that. There we go. So it looks pretty grim, doesn't it? And then, of course, you can, with this little bar here, you can increase or decrease the size, depending on what you, you, you're going for. So that's pretty cool. Uh, you don't want it to, like, one of the things also in, um, in um, when you're making assets is you don't want too much noise either. So, you know, depending on what you're doing, you don't want it to be too noisy. So you want it to kind of have, you know, so something like that might be a bit more suitable. And again, you can sort of increase or decrease it as you see fit. So it could be something like that. And if you're kind of happy with that, you can just move that to one side. Let me just uh, bring that to full size. And then with your brush uh, selected, you can basically just, you should be able to just sort of start painting. See there. And it'll give you that now. Obviously, I'm streaming at the moment. Oh, I've got some. Um, I've got some other programs on the go, so it's going to struggle a little bit. You can see that it's really starting to slow down, but you get the general idea there. You know, so it's got that kind of metallic effect on there. And there are some other ones as well. There's one here you can use, just slightly different. So best thing to do is have, a, have an experiment, play around. Um, I think for the purpose of today, I'm, I'm inclined just to kind of leave that because it's, um, I'm just aware of the time. And, you know, you can have a play around with that. The next feature that, that I want to show you, though, and again, just going back to the beginning of the video, is it was mainly about just showing you some of these functions, but about how to kind of get quick concepts done, you know, without just, you know, going down the road of just trying to um, render stuff out. You can actually uh, get stuff done and then put it back in, say, Photoshop in a relatively short space of time. So... That's where we come into the render. So I'm going to come into the render now. And you can see there, for example, with this, we've got, uh, a, it's a lot nicer, the render on this. I'm going to, or shall I do that? I'll, I might see if I can open up Photoshop uh, at some point. But what I want to do is really just kind of start ending on creating um, 
created some renders of this. Now, this isn't the, I know in the latest version, I think of 3D code, it's the, made this a lot easier, but I'm using this one that's on apps anywhere at the moment, but in terms of the lighting, because it makes it difficult because you can't see them. So you can add a light, say there, but you can't see where it is. All you can do is play around with the effects of it, which is a bit like, it feels a little bit counterintuitive, but Let's say, for example, I'm going to create two bits of lighting. One of them is going to be like, a kind of, one of the things I like is like the pinky lighting. I like kind of pink and blue. So if I do that, you can play around with things like the exposure, just so it's not so intense. Um, you can play around with things like, you know, environment light and stuff like that if you want to. Uh, but you, uh, this is the bit here that we're just concerned with, the things like the rotation. So you can see that there, you can play around with the, you know, so you can get a bit of like shadow going on there, which is pretty cool. And scattering as well, so it's not so intense. That's another one. And uh, color, I've told you about that. And then you've got the intensity, of course. You can really blanch things out if you want to. Now I'm going to create another light. And uh, I'm going to try and get this one below. So this, this one I'm going to make blue. So it's a kind of contrast. Click OK. You can see there now, even with that, it's quite nice. And then... I'm just going to play around with the height. So you can see there now on the blue, it's kind of below. Yeah, so you can see, I know it's kind of flickering a little bit, but you can see the blue is being is lighting from above. If I now still holding that button there and then move it above, you can see there it's going up to where the pink is. So I kind of want it from kind of below, from the blue, like that. And then we kind of, if I look at the pink, maybe even change the intensity a little bit maybe. You can even just change the rotation angle a little bit on the on the pink to say something like that. You can just create some really interesting, um, you know, effects. You know, this kind of up lighting and things like that. And what you can do from there is, let me just see if I can just change the angle a bit on that. So from there, what you could do is you could take that and then do a render of it. So. Depending on the angles, let's say we choose that as one angle. Let's say we choose that where it's kind of almost like you can imagine them just sort of looking down at you in disdain, like, uh, my next meal, something like that, right? You've got that kind of angle there. So I'm going to go render. And you can see that you should have that tick there, like real time render. And then if I click render, there's a little folder that I'll put it in. Click render, and then we'll go to desktop and I'll just create a folder and I'll call it Angler or more precisely Bionic Angler. Oh, no, let's try, oh, it's that dreaded Bentley thing. Let's try that again. Angler Fish, to be precise. And in that folder, we'll open that and we'll just call it, um, we'll just call it one and click save. And then it should just start rendering it out. There we go. So now if we go to the folder, wherever it is, there we go. And there's our little render. Oh, it's popped onto the screen, let's bring it in there. So you can see there now, that's pretty cool. Um, you can play around with the resolution of it. So if I just come back out of that second. Yeah, you can play around with the resolution of it. Um, but for the purpose of just doing, you know, again, just for a video like this, you know, you can just keep, keep, keep it at the default settings. And uh, go ahead. But if you, you know, if you are inclined to do it, you can see there, you can play around with the render size and look, it kind of goes up. But again, word to the warning, start playing around with this. Just things like be prepared for things like crashes, a computer slowing up. It depends. Depends on the power of the computer. I've just kept that at default setting. That that works. That works fine for me. And then, but from there, you see what you can do is so I've got that render, and then you can start playing around. Oh, you can start playing around with say, oh, that was quite nice, wasn't it? <laughs> I quite like that one. It's got some real attitude. This uh, this fish. So I can look at something like that, then do a render of that. Okay. And then I'll just call this two, okay? There we go. And then let's pick another angle. Maybe do a side view, maybe something like that. Yeah. 
maybe getting a bit closer, something like that. He really looks scary. Okay, and then do a render of that. Okay, and we'll call it three. Right, and then, you know, depending on what you're doing, you know, you might want to, or you might want to like a real close. Oh, do you want to get that close? I'm not sure I want to get that close, but let's get that close. Uh, right, so something like that, right? And then render, we'll call it four. So we'll do four, four different views. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is, and hopefully I'm not going to crash the computer, is I'm going to close down Maya just, just because, because I've got quite a few programs open. So I'll just click on that. I'll save it. I'll call it fish. Just, just be quick fish, right? And I'm going to attempt just to open up Photoshop because just in the closing minutes of this uh, tutorial, I just want to kind of show you again, just quick concepts without like going into, you know, into any massive detail and just by using lighting, just by using lighting and uh, doing renders, you can come up with some, you know, really nice concepts for your work, like in a matter of a couple of hours. This is why I think, um, you know, we said it before to students and those who are other students, you know, second years and third years who are watching this will know that, you know, we're always reiterating like um, um, about trying to mix 2D and 3D simply just for the simple uh, reason that it's a lot quicker. And also you can come up with some really cool ideas as well along the way. See if we can just open that up. Yeah, it does look scary, my word. Yeah, I wouldn't want to meet that. Okay, so I'm just going to close. So I've got a million and one windows open, so I'm just going to close some of these down. Just to free up a bit of space. Now, what's it doing? Is it opening up or is it having to think about it? Let's have a look. So far, no joy. Let's try that again then. Okay, success. So, what you can do from here is <clears throat> with your renders, you can then either just um, import them as documents and then continue to work into them, you know, with your, <clears throat> with your, um, you know, your painting and all that stuff, all that cool stuff, or perhaps, you know, you're just thinking, no, I just want to kind of get it, get it for a presentation and then just basically assemble it into a sort of document, um, which is probably what we're going to do, do here. So let's give it a sec. Okay, almost there, folks. We'll see, I might see about, when I do the edit, I might see about chopping some of this down. Just to speed things up. Right, okay. Ooh, let's see if we can minimize. That. 
All right, there we go. I think we might be in business. Okay, there we go. So open. Go and find our folder, Bionic Anglerfish. There we are. There he is. Open those up. Excellent. Right, and then what we can do is I'm just going to create another document. Dum, 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 dum. Right, second. And then I'm just going to go and rotate that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go and copy that background there, get that, something like that. Then I, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go, I'll probably create another layer. And then just paint that in there. So got it the same, same uh, background. And then using the, mark, using the marquee tool, I'm just going to copy this. There we go. And what you can do here is you can just basically create a series of kind of visuals. So it can maybe, I don't know, as that's kind of disappearing, maybe you have something like there. That could be one. And then what you can do is, if you want to, you know, it depends what you want to do or how, you know, how you want to sort of present it. You could, using the eraser tool, you know, just take some of this, you know, background away, something like that. Use the smudge tool. Uh, increase the strength of that. There we go. I'll say something like that. You know, it's just have you know, give it a bit of artistic flair. You know, it doesn't we're not talking about making everything nice and neat. You can kind of just have a bit of fun with it, be playful, and um, let's have another look at another one. So we've got that there. Let's have a look at the side view. Let's do that. We can bob that in there. So they're almost like little studies that you've done of like of your little character. Say something like that. Again, we can do the same thing again. And I'm doing this on the fly. I mean, you know, whichever way you want to do it. Do it, do it the way you want to do it. I guess you know you want to think about things like composition. Um, I've got this quite high at the moment, actually. Let me just let's just try that again. I was wondering why it's struggling. Of course, I've got it at 300 uh, pixels, so let's just take that down to say, I don't know, mm. let's try a 200 just so it's not so laggy. Let's try that. Might still be a bit laggy, but. Something like that. Again, you could probably do with like having it, probably like 150 maybe, as opposed to 200. And we'll do this one here. Okay, and something like that. And we'll put that. Um, actually, no, I'll tell you what, we'll have a look at this one here. And we'll put that. That's quite similar to the other one, isn't it? Yeah, it is quite similar. So maybe, it is quite similar. Um, two ones, just leave that to one side for the minute. Let's go back to, which one was it? That one there, copy that. 
and then we can maybe put one maybe in the corner again you know just thinking about composition as well you don't want to you don't want to make it too overcrowded you want like a bit of a sort of a bit of space on it as well so you're not just cramming everything in and again just i'm just thinking like things for your portfolio where you just want to be show a bit of sort of you know it's almost like going to the realms of graphic design really so look at that would it be better there might even be better there i don't know again sort of play around play around you can't go wrong just have a bit of a play around all right, so something like that. Right, and and that's where you can do things like have text. So you make know, you put a bit of text in there. And we could also at the moment, so something like. There, whatever. Increase the size. Take it up to say something. So I would call it, say, bionic. Bionic. Angler. I'll tell you what we'll do. Well, if that is one word. Bionic. Might you duplicate that. Duplicate. Something like that. And then what we can do is we can take that. I'm just going to rasterize it. Just turn it into like an image. And then what we can do is. Um, make it white. And then what we can also do is put a bit of a blur on it just to. Um, Give it a kind of glow. Let's go Gaussian blur. There we go. And let's increase that a little bit. And maybe actually, maybe we will. Oh yeah, no worries, Paul. Yeah, you go and you go and head off. That's fine. Thanks for joining us. And um, rasterize that. I'll just. Increase the brightness in that as well. Yeah, something like that. Bionic. And then we'll go to take that text down. Let's say 18. Um, Angler. Fish. Ooh, didn't need to do that. All right, let's try that again. Maybe move it to about. So this is just more like kind of graphic-y type stuff where you can kind of have a sort of play around. And then just move that, something like that. And then, of course, you know, it's it's open for you to kind of work into more, you know, in terms of, you know, um, adding some more features to it. So, for example, you know, as this is a kind of biomechanical fish, you know, you can could, you could even photobash it, put some stuff in there, um, add some more metallic effects. But as I mentioned before, if you go back into 3D Coat, you can kind of add stuff like that in the paint shop. So, you know, and then have a play around. So maybe you could have some circuitry or pipes, you know, like some ducting, whatever. Or save you from, you know, doing that, you know, you could, you could have, let me say, for example, if I put like, um, so I'm just gonna do like a quick, quick example of this. If I just go into say search engine and have a look and say uh, ducting, Let's 
Let's have a look. Well, he's having to think about it. Okay. Well, whilst it's something to think about it, maybe I can just illustrate it. So, you know, you could do, it's probably because I've got loads of programs open. So, you know, you can do something like, you can have a look at this and think, okay, well, maybe what I'm going to do is add, add some wiring, or it seems to be able to do something like not, as the case may be. All right, so we've got some duct, ducting stuff going on there. Um, something like, that's quite interesting. So I could choose something like that, for example. This is going into the realms of photo bashing now, but um, go copy image. And you could have something like that. You choose the, um, uh, where are we? Oh, goodness, no, I shouldn't be out to 32. Let's try that again. There we go. Take that background away. And then you could sort of use something like that as a kind of, you know, and then warp it into place and do all manner of things with it as you so wish. You know, play around. I mean, that's probably not exactly what I was looking for. I'm probably looking for something a bit more like um, sort of dark. Uh, you know, dark wiring, something like that. So really something a bit more like, um, if I just go back to create another layer. And something a bit darker, something like that. You know, you could start to kind of add You know, almost like um, Borg. I don't know if anyone watches um, Star Trek, but you know, you can you can add bits of wiring and bits of ducting. So as if you know, it's like a sort of HR Geiger kind of biomechanical type thing that you're sort of creating. It's a little bit stronger than this. But you get the general idea, you know, you can sort of start to, you know, just get a bit more involved in it, play around with it, see what works, see what doesn't work. And then, um, and then see where you go from there, really. But that is pretty much it, folks, really, in terms of um, in terms of like, you know, just getting something like within the space of two hours. Just getting something like off the ground in terms of a concept. You don't have to do like, you know, a ton of work on it. It could just be something where, you know, you've got an afternoon and you're thinking, all right, I just want to try and explore some of these ideas, start playing around with some of that, seeing what works, what doesn't work. Um, let me just change the color on that. You know, it might be just like, you know, uh, just trying that concept really at the end of the day without investing too much time into um into what you're doing and um, simply because you know it's time is precious and uh, you know you don't you, sometimes i don't know you know about anyone else but sometimes it's like you try things out and it isn't it just it's just not working out it's just whatever it is it might look good on paper but then you start um I don't know what's going on the caps lock on uh you know you you stop you, you kind of actualize it and it's, you know, it's just not what, uh, what you're after. 
And uh, it's just the way it goes. So sometimes it's just on paper, sometimes it just looks like it should work and it, and it just doesn't. So again, just something to bear in mind. And as much as anything else, it's just a, um, a tool, really. It's a tool for you to use. And, uh, and if it works, that's great. If it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, move on. Well, you know, hopefully this has been, um, been helpful for you. I certainly had some fun doing it. And uh, I could quite happily carry on for the rest of the afternoon <laughs> kind of doing it. But unfortunately, I've got some other things to do. But um, I'll upload this picture anyway onto, um, onto Discord. And um, of course, if anyone's got any questions about it, um, then of course I'll be uh, happy to answer. Um, I'll be cutting the video together because there's yesterday's video and this. I'll cut them together. I'll try and uh, just just eliminate some of the waffle just so I can kind of get to um, get to the, the main points. And uh, but that's it. So thanks to Ankin, Anka, and Didi, and Paul, and um, and all the others that uh, joined us on this uh, video. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing you next time. So that's it. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye for now.